What's going on, guys? Just waiting for a few more people to tune in. Thank you for tuning in, by the way, those of you here now. Uh, Derek Bennett here from Derek Bennett Lessons, uh, DerekBennett.com. Um, let's just play the video that I'm going to be breaking down real quick. What's going on, everybody? Now, let me know if you can hear me okay. You know, it's always tricky with these live streams. <laughs> what's going on? Hey, Jeffrey, Dennis, what's going on, everybody? Good to see you here. I just decided at the last minute I'm going to break down this... <laughs> break down this crazy praise break shout break from Quinnell Gaskin uh, if you don't know who he is is amazing uh, keyboard player piano player organ player um, all around uh, I know last time I went live I was transcribing a piano lick of my good friend um, Andre Sims but I don't know something about keyboard players that <laughs> fascinate me I don't know why but I try to get their licks and it's very uh, precise and intricate uh, especially to learn on bass and it's very very great exercise to learn this type of stuff on bass now this particular video has gone pretty uh, I would say it's gone pretty viral I didn't really mean for it to uh, but I was just having fun just working out with the line um, but yeah it's it's pretty uh, I've heard of people call it like that Tom and Jerry type of theme song type of vibe uh, but you, you'll you'll see what I mean in, in a minute uh, and I'll just break these notes down to you guys. It's very, it's actually pretty simple. Um, and I want to play it over again. And I want some more, just wait for some more people to come in. Uh, but thank you for those who you are tuning in right now who are tuned in. Uh, so I'll just play that lick for you now. And I'm actually going to share this to my other uh, social media profile. So. Hey, brother from Brazil, from India. I follow you more. Keep posting. Sure thing from Brazil, mad love from Brazil. And then it fades out right there, but I'll keep playing it again. <laughs> it might be out of sync. The, don't worry, the, the, the video might be out of sync a little bit. I don't know, it's something weird with this stream, but you get the idea, you can actually hear it. Okay, I think I'm all shared. I'm all shared up, guys. What's going on, Lewis? Lewis, what's going on, man? Uh, from the 585, that's right, man. Andre Black, thanks for tuning in. Uh, from England. Let me turn this down. <laughs> Actually, we got the gist of it. We'll go back to it. We got some time. We're going to jam out for a minute. Um, uh, play along with it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get to that. Hey, from uh, Spain, from France. Uh, David, what's going on? London is in the house. London's in the house. What's going on? Uh, from Brazil. Get a bunch of love from Brazil. Love you guys. Okay, so I'm going to bring up the volume for that clip. Okay, here we go. You probably hear it better now. Yeah. Now, 
I'll mind you guys, this 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 was pretty tough. This was like it might look like it was easy. <laughs> My face might look like it was easy, but uh it's it's you know, it was pretty tough, tough workout at this speed. If you slow it down, everything is easy. But once you speed it up, you know, to that point, it gets a little bit tougher. So what I did was I broke it down just like the last live stream, just like transcribing anything. I slowed it down, just listened note by note, went like uh, a couple of notes a piece, you know, um, because everybody in that actual album or that song is doing the line, except for the except for the bass player at that point or at that time. So I said, hey, it might be fun just to double up that line that everybody else is doing. So it was something like a bebop line that I would play already so it was a little it, it was you know it wasn't that hard for me to figure it out because i know the sound of it and if you've been playing for a long time you hear these different phrases you hear these different sounds you hear these different scales uh even bebop scales anything like that um, and you start to recognize them pretty quick uh so that's a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of ear training for you so what i would say this particular song uh, it's, it's more it's like a it's more gospel like this is what you would hear in more urban gospel like a shout a praise breaker they would call it or a bump um, that's what they call it, the slang for that for like the praise break of the shout music um, but yeah it's just so much fun to play and then it starts off like I like to think about this stuff uh, when I'm playing this type of shout music uh, especially when it's like in a major key you have that major third I like to think like bebop scale like almost almost like a not a major like a dominant bebop scale all right, but if, <laughs> to start that, you have to know what it is. So it's just simply, the key is an A flat. All right, so it's just simply a, a dominant scale with a passing tone to the flat seven or a passing tone from the flat seven. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I'm playing the A flat major scale or A flat dominant scale, excuse me. All right, so you have that flat seven. The bebop scale is just adding that one more note into that. All right, which will be the G. All right, so that is an actual scale. You bring it back down, it sounds a little bit more uh, uh, relative to what you may hear. All right, so that's how that starts that, you know, those chromatic lines into this. This is all over the place inside of this song. You know, it's all over the place. And uh, it's, it's more derived from like the Charlie Parker version, uh, Gillespie type of, uh, vibes from you know back in the day when they kind of developed these bebop lines and uh, you know gospel kind of transformed it into something pretty crazy you can get pretty creative with it so um, so I'm gonna try to <laughs> explain this let me answer a couple of questions and I'll, I'll take more questions at the end um, guys too but I'll try to get to you um, JJ.net can you do another video where you transcribe a gospel baseline sure of course um, Canada uh, hey, what's going on from Canada? Dallas, Texas in the house. What's going on, man? Uh, hello, hello, hello. Thank you all for tuning in. <laughs> uh, from Brazil again. Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to start this lick off. In the beginning, let me play just the first beginning of it so you guys can hear. And I would literally stop right there. I'll probably stop even sooner than that, you know? So I would stop maybe the first couple of notes. I mean, when you add, when you bring in the, when you bring in that bass line rolling up to the, to the A flat, that's very simple. You're just going from uh, C to E flat, from F to A flat. You're just walking that up, right? Uh, let me make sure I'm, yeah, that was it from C. All right, so walking it up from C, that's the intro. And then the line comes in. You don't even hit that A flat. That's when the line comes in. All right, so let's get to the line. I know, please excuse my singing in advance, <laughs> but I have to do that to be able to transcribe lines. And I sat there uh, for the longest time trying to transcribe this line, and I would sit there and sing it to myself and sing those intricate movements, those chromatic notes. So I knew the note started on E flat. All right. And it walked on chromatically from there. All right, just did a turn around to the major third of A flat. Okay, so it just that's more of a bebop line too. So you have walk it down from E flat, D, D flat, B, C. Okay, that's the first couple of notes. All right, then you go home to the tonic, to the root note. All right, we're gonna keep it right there. Stay right there. All right, let me see if I'm I'm correct. I always like to make sure. 
It goes by so quick. And like I said, you have to do you have to do piece by piece. And then the fingering that I'm using for that is three. Uh, sorry, four, three, two, one, two. All right, you can play it a different way too. It might be easier for you, but. All right, and then when I come down on the one, the reason why I in, end off on the A flat on my fourth finger is because I'm going down here in this position, diag well, not diagonally, but <laughs> down the fretboard in this position. So using my fourth finger to land on that root note helps me, helps my positioning. All right, so. Let's do it again. Alright, so the turnaround is a very, very popular phrase. I mean, it's used all the time. Very popular, used everywhere. All in jazz music, uh, you know, even some some blues if you think of a minor way or, or major. But anyway, so we got the first couple of notes. Alright, those last two notes that I didn't mention is F. E flat. Okay, so we got it. I hope you guys are great. You got your bass in front of you, right? You're not just watching me just to <laughs> just for the heck of it, right? You you're you're playing along with me, right? Uh, some of you may be watching. That's fine. Anyway, but if you want to learn this, grab your bass. Come on. All right. So that's the first part. All right. So we got it. We got we got that much. Okay. It's a long process, but it's you know it's it's uh, it's worth it. Those lines are intricate, man. Those chromatic lines, those are the hardest lines to try to transcribe. All right, sometimes you can figure out the line, but you might not have the right fingering. So <laughs> that's the other half of what I'm trying to figure out or when I'm transcribing something is how is the, e what's the easiest way for me to transcribe something? What's the easiest way for me to play it, All right? I can, you know, read the notes, you know, uh, like it's nothing, but to play it, to transfer it to your instrument. You know, I, I, I was having a conversation with somebody and stay tuned for the next uh, Bass Nation TV episode, y'all. Yeah, just stay tuned. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, I think you guys are really gonna like who I have uh, coming up for, for the next couple of ep uh, coming episodes. But anyway, I was talking to one of those guys and uh, <laughs> without spoiling anything, and we were talking about how important it is how important it is to have that fingering, have that mind for that mindset of, of uh, when you're learning something, don't give up on it. You know, when, like we'll, we'll practice all day long, all day long until we get that one thing that we're trying to get. And I think that's the ethic of, or the passion of playing bass uh, that a lot of people uh, fail to have. And they want that process to be real quick, you know, an instant. And it's not, you have to enjoy the process. You have to trust the process. Um, anyway, Let's keep going. <laughs> I can go off track. Off. We have those notes. Now we're going to walk down from A flat chromatically. Okay. To the F. All right. So we got A flat. We're walking it down. G. G flat. F. All right. Then we're going to end up on the on the E flat. Okay. So let's put it all together. One, two, three, four. Two. Ah, I had to play exactly where I stopped. I'm so used to playing it now. Just that much. Just that much. All right. So let's stop and get some questions real quick. <laughs> um, Ariel Gomez, what's up from Puerto Rico? God bless you too. From Panama. I'm missing a lot of comments, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you use to slow down the song without measuring the without messing up the pitch. Now, I used to not, uh, well, I still don't. I really don't uh, use anything to slow down the pitch. I try to actually learn it at full speed, and that's the challenge. That's what actually will speed up that challenge, uh, or speed up the process, I mean. So uh, if you're trying to, trying to learn something at full speed, almost forcing yourself to learn it, I mean, that's not for everybody, but there are certain softwares out there you can slow it down, um, like on uh, DerekBennett.com and the Bass Nation Academy, I have the uh, the option to slow everything down without changing the pitch. Um, there's a software on there that you can do that. Um, there's another one. There's another app. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but my best bet is just try to find that. If you just can't do it at full speed, if it's just way too fast, 
Sometimes that might mean <laughs> you're not ready for it yet. Um, but there's some software out there that you can do it just to have fun with it. Anyway, so mad at right, I'm at work right now thinking about leaving just to go get my base. <laughs> Kendall, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I hear you. I hear you. Magic Mendez. What's up, my brother from the ATL? Love your work. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And sometimes it's uh, I slow it down and I have a track like I've just made this dummy track here too, almost like a, you know, shout type of pattern, you know, and I'll slow it down. That's about 105, 107. Hold on, wait. Yes, yeah, 107. I can't read today, right? So I do it at that speed, right? And I'll slow it down to where I can get it, you know? All right, so I'll slow it down to that, or I'll even slow it down even more, depending on where you are. Depending on where you are. It doesn't, you know, it's, it's, don't be ashamed to slow down even more. This is 95. You know, in the in the actual BPM of the song is like 151 or something like that, 150 something. Uh, you have to work your way up to that. So once I listen to, once I listen to the song and I get the BPM and I figure out the lines, a part of the line, I'll just like we just did. One, two, three, oh, and I'll. I'll put a metronome on or I'll put a, a you know, a track on uh, with actual live instruments uh, or live drums, whatever, um, just to help me with that process. I'll do it over and over and over again. OK, so let's go. <laughs> Hands are freezing. <laughs> it's harder to do that. Uh, what's going on, uh, Venezuela? Hey, what's going on, uh, Ali? Is that right, Ali? Oh, I can't read today. <laughs> From Poland, what's going on? You wanted the best in a oh, while, man. I wouldn't say that. But thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you for tuning in. Dennis, I have to buy a fret wrap. I don't know the size I should choose. I have a five string bass. Can you help me please? Um, I had a fret wrap before. I don't even know where it's at. Um, it's somewhere around here, but I try not to use it as much as possible um, just because I want to be able to learn how to muffle the strings myself. Um, I, I think of that as a, I wouldn't say it's cheating, but it's a helper, you know, it's, a, it's definitely a helper, but um, to be able to do that by yourself without having to get a fret wrap, I think that's my goal and that has been my goal for a while. No fret rap things really didn't come around um, for a while. No people used to use like scrunchies and stuff or Victor Wooten used to use like, you know, hair ties and scrunchies to put around his base um, as well. But uh, I think online, if you just type them in, I think you can find them. Um, okay, cool. We're going to keep finishing the line. Chromatically going down. Okay, so we're starting off from the top. If you're just now tuning in, we're starting from the top. Let's pl actually play it again for those who are tuning in. Just now. And that that um that line is very repetitive. It does that about four times. All right, so we're just gonna go over that. I'll slow it down even more. Three, four. Okay, so we have that much. Now we're gonna walk it down from A flat to F to E flat. Okay, so you got that? A flat, A, oh sorry, A flat, G, G flat, F, E flat. Okay, so that much. Got it? Okay, let's speed it up a little bit more. One, two, three, four. Ah, keep going further than I <laughs> than I actually say. Sorry. One, two, three, four. All right. Now it walks down the same exact way. It walks down the same exact way once you get to that E flat. Okay, you're going down chromatic. It's a lot of chromatic movement. A lot of chromatic movement. It's just, it's just, uh, you know, trying to figure out the fingering. Like I said, was the toughest part before. Um, so, the same line. If you want to think about it like this, the same line that we had in the beginning of the lick is the same exact line that we'll have on the A string. Okay. Remember that one line? You're going to be doing that same line on the A string, an octave lower. All right. So if you want to group it like that and actually it, that'll actually help you learn this stuff quicker. 
All right, so we can put it together. Here we go. See that? All right, so just slow it down at your own pace. Uh, when you watch the rebroadcast, you can slow it down, rewind it, whatever you want to do. And this the whole entire thing will be available at um, DerekBennett.com as well if you want to take a look um, at it and being able to slow it down that way. Um, ASAF bass. Hey, uh, Derek, how do you tune your bass? Uh, standard. Standard. Uh, what string size I use? Uh, I use on this one, on this, uh, my signature bass, I use 45s. 45s. Dunlop stainless steel strings. Yeah, from 45 to 125, I think. Um, hold on, wait. Yeah. 40, yeah, 45s. Yeah, 45. But anyway. Um, Gustavo, I just wanted you to know from the Dominican Republic, Republic, but I am in Pennsylvania right now. I've been playing for many years. I love the way you play. God bless you. Bless you too, Gustavo. Appreciate that. Appreciate it. Um, and all the links to this stuff will be down in the description, guys. You can look right down there now. Um, to actually, This will be available after this, um, later on today, and it'll be available at, on the Online Academy. Um, so you can actually slow it down. And, and this transcription and everything, it's on uh, DerekBennett.com. You can download it and everything. You can just start your free trial and download the transcription. Uh, the whole entire thing is scripted. Even when I'm going crazy and I'm, you know, I don't even know what, I can't even remember what I did. Uh, uh, that's probably, I'm pretty sure that's not what I did. But I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, I can't remember what I did. But anyway, the whole transcription, uh, PDF download, uh, sheet music to 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 be able to look at and dissect every note I did that time. I can't remember exactly what it was. Uh, I was in the moment and I just played. Um, wasn't scripted. Wasn't anything. Uh, so that's why I can't even remember what I did. But anyway, the first line is actually what I remember because that's a part of the song. All right, so. Um, 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 um. Okay, I want to get some more questions. I'm going to get to the questions later at the end. So stay tuned in, guys. I'm going to finish this line. Uh, then I'm going to take some, take some questions, okay? So uh, let's, let's use this. Let's use the track. <laughs> Speed it up. I got now, if you're a person that don't like that doesn't like to use all four fingers, um, I have bad news for you. <laughs> this is gonna be tough. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be pretty tough. Yeah. So if you don't, if you're not a person that like to use all four. Yeah, this is gonna be pretty tough. Uh, the dexterity that it has, this, the dexterity that comes along with playing this, uh, especially for guitar players, uh, is pretty intricate. So you almost have to use all four, uh, all four fingers, um, especially with these chromatic lines uh, that are in groups of fours. Some of them as well. All right, so let's finish off the line. All right, so after you finish that line on the A string, you hit the you hit the uh, root note. You're back to A flat. Now there's two more notes afterwards that you have to worry about. So you got F and then E flat. Okay. So if you're playing a five string, it's hard to play this on a four <laughs> uh, because that low note, uh, only if you went up yeah, pretty high, but that would, that would be pretty ridiculous. Um, <laughs> so you have to hit that low E flat, or even if you're tuned a half step down, if you're playing a four string, you might be able to hit this. Uh, yeah, you probably hit, be able to hit this because the lowest note is the E flat. So if you're tuned down a half step on a four string, you'll be able to get it. But those last two notes, <sighs> excuse me, those last two notes are, are F and E flat. So again, I'm going to do it slow. And I kind of see you guys asking about different exercises in this is a great exercise transcribing something like this or a piano line or a saxophone line that you know you won't normally see on a bass or being played on a bass is awesome exercise it'll actually help you think a little bit more as far as your positioning your fingering um, you know you kind of have to plan ahead of time or actually have your fingering uh, you know up to par because some of these lines aren't normal on a guitar so the way we have to finger them, especially we're tuned in four. So I mean, we, we, we only really have too many things that we can do. Uh, we have to figure out the best way to play them. Um, so this stuff like this is great exercise and it's fun to play. 
you know? So this was an exercise at the same time I was trying to play it and playing along to it, and I just had fun with it. All right, but anyway, um, I forgot where I left off. All right, you got that? You got it? I did the, the whole entire phrase, which is super long. Stretch, stretch, you know, <laughs> especially down here, you got to stretch hard. You got to stretch wide, right? Um, so that's the whole entire lick. I want to do it up to speed. I think it was around 150 or something like that. I'm going to start at one, like 145. I'm going to play it. I think that's it. Yeah. So I think that's yeah, that's that's 145, but I think it's even faster than that. Um what's a chromatic line? Good question. Chromatic line is a consecutive uh number of notes or consecutive notes back to back. All right, so half steps away. Chromatic, that's, that's exactly what that means. So chromatic line just basically means a half step away um, from the next note. This phrase has a lot of chromatic lines in it. Chromatic, chromatic, you know what I mean? So it has a lot of those chromatic lines, good question. Uh, you're a great teacher, man. Thank you, uh, Bartek, if I'm saying that right. Um, how you exercise for the speed of your fingers, the best practice. Yeah, that's what I was just explaining. Some of the best practices uh, transcribing things like this, um, stuff that you know uh, you won't normally hear. Like that's why I like transcribing a lot of keyboard players, a lot of piano players, a lot of uh, um, even guitar players can do some stuff <laughs> that is uh, pretty ridiculous for bass players to do. Um, so like sax players, trumpet players, things like that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to be on too long. Thank you for those of you who, t who are just now tuning in. Uh, we're going over this uh, this line. This Here Comes the King by Quinnell Gaskin. If you want to check it out, Quinnell Gaskin on iTunes. It's called Cut a Rug. Um, I'll probably have that link in the description as well. Um, check it out. Awesome pianist, organist, whatever, everything. Any any type of keys he touches, he's amazing. All right, so we're going to play this again for those of you who are just now tuning in. I'm just breaking down this line. You can watch it back you know, in the rebroadcast. So here it is. Hey, from Korea, what's going on? All right, cool. So for those of you who are just now tuning in, that was the, that's the line that we're actually breaking down. And I heard somebody uh, ask, oh, I didn't hear, <laughs> but I saw somebody ask the question, what are, what are the benefits of transcribing bass lines uh, of songs? Uh, if that's the right, yeah, JJ, J dot J net. Um, yeah, that's what I was just explaining. Those are some of the benefits to transcribing bass lines, transcribing solos. It helps you become a part of your vocabulary. So learning phrases like this, you know, in a different setting or a different, uh, even if it's not this speed or this fast, you'll start learning different phrases that you've never played before. So that it just increase your vocabulary, especially a lot of these chromatic lines. So that helps a ton. Trust me. Um, I've been doing it for years, even even just regular bass lines and just putting some more, uh, just match, adds more tools to your arsenal, you know, uh, to your toolbox. I uh, can't imagine, can't imagine even playing that fast. Uh, box, <laughs> box didn't <in> fresh. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's not impossible, guys. Just slow it down and then work up to it. Um, what is the best way to get motivation back into practicing? Start on the basics. Go back. Well, go back to the basics. I tell everybody, all of my students that say they have a plateau or they're they're in a plateau right now, go back to the basics. You might have missed something that you didn't catch before when you first started playing. Um, yeah, you'll be surprised what you can get out of that. Just going back to, to the basics. Jay Blake, what's going on? Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're going to play this one more time, probably full speed. Uh, I'm going to increase the speed to 150. Uh, yeah, I'm going to increase the speed to 150. 
So that was 150. And what I would do, I just try to challenge myself and just make sure I get it clean and clear. This is 155. And I'll do it again, you know. Uh, it's hard when your hands are cold. And if I can't get it, I'll slow it down. Um, this is 160. I'm pretty sure I can't do this. <laughs> I've never really tried this fast. Uh, yeah, see, I'm rush. I'm rushing it because I think it's way too fast. So what I would do, I would just slow it down. Uh, but hey, for the heck of it, you just try it out anyway. <laughs> Ah, yeah, that's a little bit too fast. 160 is a little bit too fast, but that's fine. You just slow it down and make sure you get it clean. The thing is, I can do it, but it'll be so sloppy. It'll be so messy, it'll be so sloppy. So I just try to make sure every note is coming out clean, clear, and precise, like I always say, after every single lesson. And if you guys want to learn more of this, it's just a live stream. We're just having fun. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing too technical right now. But if you're interested in learning how to play, DerekBennett.com, it is right here. DerekBennett.com. <laughs> That's hard to see. Uh, so go there and check it out. The links that are in the description. We have tons of tutorials for beginners, intermediate, advanced players. Um, if you want to just go back to the basics and you got a plateau, try it out. Trust me. Um, there's tons of people on there, especially in the forums, helping each other out and also uh, submitting videos uh, and uh, to be able to get feedback from me. Um, just, just all around a great place to hang out and uh, learn how to play bass. <laughs> we have fun over there. But anyway, so that was the line. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I'll probably do another live stream to do the actual crazy uh, solo thing I was doing. I can't remember. I know it started off like that half step uh, crazy uh, <laughs> movement. Yeah, I started off like that. I don't know what made me start. That was like, it was more like a guitar type of bass lick. So that's a, that's a half step between each other, but I'm not playing it. I'm not playing it on one string. I'm playing on two strings. It gives it a different tone. It gives it a different uh, feel because you can actually hear both notes at the same time for like a split second instead of, you hear how that kind of, that one note rings, you know, kind of holds over. And you get that nasty minor second uh, moving in. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me answer some more questions and we're gonna get out of here, guys. Thanks, uh, thanks for tuning in so far. Um, uh, where are we at? Do you have a favorite scale? Uh, your licks sound awesome, <laughs> thanks. Um, I do have a, uh, I have some favorite scales. Some of the bebop, some of the bebop scales are one of my favorite scales, like the major bebop and the um, dominant bebop scale, and also the melodic minor scale. I love using that as well. Uh, what is some of the best? What is the best way to start sight reading? That's a good question. Uh, the best way to start sight reading is just start slow. Start slow. Learn your staff. Learn the lines of the staff. Learn the spaces of the staff. Okay. Learn that first. Learn how to actually read the sheet first. Right. Then you can transfer because anybody can learn how to read. Right. Anybody can learn how to read. It's like learning a different it's like learning a different language, but it's actually a whole lot easier than learning a different 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 language because you don't have too many words. You know, it's just you know, it's just those notes. All right. So just learn the staff. Right. And then you bring it down to your base. You learn the notes of the whatever instrument you're playing. That's what that's what anybody. It doesn't matter. You can the theory when the theory is is available. Anybody can learn that. It's how you apply it to your instrument. Is how you make it effective okay so that's the that's the best way I, I would say learn the staff first learn the staff first um, what type of strings do I use I use Dunlop strings if you see these over here right here it's actually a box open right now Ugh. Dunlop strings right and the uh, for some reason I like the D right for some reason I like that I don't know why <laughs> right makes sense but anyway um, Hey, Derek, can you help me uh, with a decision? I'm um, not sure. 
<laughs> you're really fast, but also wanted to uh, ask what practice routine do you use to increase your speed on the base? Uh, it's not one specific practice routine, but I have a lot of speed exercises on the YouTube channel as well. Um, some, some free ones on the YouTube channel as well. And I'll go more in depth with that on at DerekBennett.com on the Academy. But some of the exercises that I do is stuff like this, like transcribing things like this, slowing it down and just challenging myself to try to speed it up, but get it clean as possible. Right. Get it clean as possible. Some um, speed exercises deal with uh, some of my speed exercises or dexterity exercises um, are more based around being clean. Right. So anything that I play, I can try to speed it up, but just be clean. You know, so that's where the speed come from. I, I don't I, I never focused on speed. I just focused on. How clean it is, you know, because you probably I'm, I'm not the fastest guy in the world, I'm, I'm sure, but uh, I'm sure you've heard somebody even faster but you probably can't understand every single note that they're playing. But I, I strive to let make sure everybody hears exactly what I'm playing note for note. Uh, make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. I say that all the time. Okay, um, do I give Skype lessons? I have not given Skype lessons. Uh, my day has just been kind of uh, crazy, um, but I used to. Um, and I have still have a couple of students left that I'm still kind of remaining faithful to uh, just with Skype lessons because I understand the the uh, the benefit of that. Um, but there's so much material online and I know some people need that personal touch, but there's so much material online uh, that I have uh, available for everybody. Um, that's what I'm that's what my time is consumed up of doing. But anyway, uh, what are the benefits of alternatively? Oh, attentively, sorry, listening to songs every day. And do you need to transcribe every song you hear or is it just enough to listen to songs? Um, J, J, J dot J net that what what are the benefits of attentively listening to songs every day? I, I mean, I don't necessarily say that's a benefit every day. I mean, um, if you heard that from somewhere, I mean, it's definitely a good idea. Um, I don't listen to songs every day. <laughs> I really don't uh, just because I'm around it and surrounded by it so much. I have some actually some songs to learn right now. So I'm constantly, constantly listening to songs. But sometimes, sometimes, some days I just like a, you know, just a break. <laughs> uh, let's hear the lick. Sure. I'll do the lick one more time and then we're going to and then we're going to uh, close out, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, do you apply number system while playing music on a staff? The, um, do you apply? Yes. Yeah. You. I mean. Yeah, the number system is everywhere. You can't really get away from the number system. Um, yeah, you still you still apply that when you're talking, when you're thinking chords or especially if the chord charts are written out and you have to figure out what the, you know, the two, five, one turnarounds are. If it's a one change, if it's a minor four a plagal cadence or, you know, so that number, you know, you can't really get away from that number system. Uh, um, hi, Derek, just started playing the bass. Was a guitarist for 20 years and now I know I always wanted to play bass. That is awesome. Hippo, uh, furred. <laughs> that is awesome, man. That's great. <laughs> so let's listen to the lick one more time and then I'll play it for you guys. I'll slow it down. <laughs> um, the audio is kind of out of sync weirdly from the video, so I can't play it with the video, but I'll play it after you. Um, so I'll show you guys. <laughs> All right, so let's not go over that part. <laughs> All right, so the next part. Anyway, so that was the second part of it, but I'll probably do another live stream and show you guys exactly what I played. Um, transcription and PDF is available at DerekBennett.com. Go check it out. Link is in the description. I'll play along with it one more time, and then we're going to be out of here, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, check the descriptions in, in, uh, in below, like I said before. And uh, I'm going to close out with playing a lick. idea why I started playing that but <laughs> I just felt it
Thanks for tuning in. Just having some fun. Tune in next time. <laughs> Going to be doing it more often. Oh, uh, that got me out of breath. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's let's listen to some of these. Uh, Going to answer a few more questions. Going to be out here. I know I said before. All right. So, um, where did I left off? Where did I leave off? Um, can you please talk a little bit more about circuit of fifth. Yes, I have talked about circular fifths and cycles um, of fourths as well. Uh, no problem. Thanks for tuning in, Bar uh, Barnabas. Uh, we, will I ever go back to six string? I wouldn't mind having a six string. I just haven't gotten one. <laughs> I used to play six string all the time. Uh, thanks for the lesson. No problem, Theo. Good time. Thanks for tuning in. Um, when, the, when is the next lesson? A lesson just actually came out today. Uh, when, or if you mean when is the next live stream? Um, the next live stream will probably be uh, will probably be next week, actually, because I want to start doing these a little bit more. I'm um, just having fun and uh, nothing too formal. Just thank you guys for tuning in and hanging out with me. Um, so it'll probably be next week. <laughs> it'll be next week. And a lesson for the, uh, the Base Nation Academy actually went out today. It goes out every single Friday. So go check that out. If you even if you just submit your email address, you'll get every single lesson. You'll get the free lesson every single week. So check the description. You'll go here to DerekBennett.com. Um, and, and you'll get notified of every single lesson and also subscribe to the channel guys, right? Uh, the link will be in the description um, Like I said before, so thank you for tuning in um, Base yeah, stay tuned for the next base nation TV episode is coming out very 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 soon I'm gonna have more uh, guests more uh, interviewees on there uh, We're just gonna be talking about base related stuff follow the Instagram page if you're coming from Instagram subscribe <laughs> if you're coming from YouTube so uh, check out the Instagram page and follow me and I'll, and I'll see you guys over there uh, next time. But thank you for tuning in, guys, and I appreciate it. Um, Till next time. <laughs>